Welcome back to AMTV News. I'm your anchor, Topher Morrison. It's Wednesday, January 16, 2013. 30 round clips aren't big enough. So Obama by now has readied 23 executive orders to deploy upon America in his crusade to rid our nation of rampant mass gun violence. Gun control advocates, however, repeatedly ignore that violent crime rates have plummeted over the last two decades, mass shootings are rare, not on the rise, and that the Second Amendment isn't as much for thugs as it is a protection against big government. The first American Revolution was sparked at Lexington and Concord when our previous government attempted to seize our weapons of war, as Obama refers to them. In 1789, that event was fresh in the minds of our founders. Eric Erickson writes, quote, You may think a 30-round magazine is too big. Under the real purpose of the Second Amendment, a 30-round magazine might be too small. <laughs> Considering the size of the military-industrial complex, our national debt, and the appetite for control Washington continually espouses, he is absolutely right. Government killed Read It co-founder. At his son's funeral, the father of Aaron Schwartz, co-founder of Read It, one of the most popular link aggregating sites on the internet claimed, Aaron did not commit suicide. Someone who made the world a better place was pushed to his death by the government. The brilliant tech entrepreneur and activist faced 13 felony counts for attempting to provide documents for free off JSTOR, an academic subscription service. Swartz saw a world's appetite for knowledge, being underserved and felt, quote, its scientific and cultural heritage, published over centuries in books and journals, increasingly being digitized and locked up by a handful of private corporations. Carmen Ortiz, an Obama appointee, and at the behest of the administration, aggressively pursued the felonies, rejected plea bargains of misdemeanor and probation for no less than prison time, potentially 35 years. The federal criminal justice system has a 95% conviction rate. Aaron may not have liked those odds. Detroit, sell Bell Island. Want to fix Detroit? Well, builders of a second bridge, Canada, wanted to give Detroit ready access to big markets and at no cost to taxpayers, and the measure barely passed amongst fierce opposition. Now, Belle Isle could be sold for a billion dollars to private investors and made into a free market utopia. This according to Detroit News, as the quote, 982-acre island would then be developed into a U.S. commonwealth or city-state of 35,000 people with its own laws, customs, and currency. City officials are likely to reject the plan on January 21st, but fresh new ideas are few and far between in the old Rust Belt. They might give this one a second look. There is a book called Bell Isle, Detroit's Game Changer, and a website to kick off on January 22nd called CommonwealthOfBellIsle.com. Check it all out and tell us what you think. Capturing every corner of the alternative media, watch AMTV News Monday through Friday. Catch me on Twitter at AMTV News and on Facebook at Greenwave TV. And for more videos like these, visit AMTVMedia.com, home of the AMTV Network. This is the voice of independence.